number five ANC SMD redistricting task force. Uh, this meeting is being conducted pursuant to guidance made available by the District of Columbia's Office of Open Government regarding electronic meetings. Pursuant to this guidance, notice of today's meeting was provided 48 hours in advance of the meeting. The notice included the time, date, and call-in information for public participation. My name is Rafi Alia Crockett, co-chair of the task force. Joining me today are co-chairs Temi Bennett, Nolan Treadway, and Sandy Washington, along with other members of the task force. During the meeting today, if you have questions, please use the Q&A function as the chat becomes crowded with comments. So we want to ensure that we're able to readily decipher the questions posed to the task force. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start this meeting. We know there's lots of questions and comments about the, uh, the maps that were put out for discussion uh, about a week ago. Um, so let's dive right in. So like death and taxes, change is inevitable. Ward 5 has grown by 23% and we have nearly 90,000 neighbors. The task force worked hard to draft maps that we hope make the most sense for all Ward 5 residents and can accommodate all of our needs. We tried to limit change as much as possible. However, there has been significant growth around Fort Totten, Brooklyn, uh, Rhode Island Avenue, and the Noma Metro stations. So this meant that kind of wholesale shifts would be required north to south within Ward 5. The exponential growth in Fort Lincoln community uh, meant that its ANC boundaries would have to expand into adjacent neighborhoods. We have SMDs right now with over 4,000 residents and many more with 2,500, 3,000 residents. So bear all of this in mind that we are also working within the restrictions of population distribution, 1,900 to 2,100 residents per SMD, and what are sometimes very oddly drawn census blocks. You may look at a map and wonder, huh, why is this line crooked? Or why didn't they just add this little corner over here? Uh, we would have loved beautiful rectangles all over Ward 5. Um, but in many instances, the census blocks were too large. You know, sometimes move one block over and you now have a densely populated apartment building. Or the things are just oddly shaped and there is really no control we have over that. So there were three main issues that we pulled out of the comments over the last uh, week or so. So the first is uh, dealing with Catholic University. Catholic encompasses a single census block and SMB 5A04, but due to the transient nature of students, the 1914 residents have had inconsistent representation throughout the years and the seat often goes vacant. So the rationale for splitting the census block, as you see in some of the maps, or combining it with other communities and uh, that you see in some of the other maps is really to improve the consistency of representation for those residents to ensure hopefully that they have an ANC commissioner at all times. Uh, the second issue that was brought up in a lot of the comments is Fort Lincoln. Fort Lincoln now has nearly 5,000 residents and we know it continues to grow. So it's impossible to keep it self-contained it's too large to be two SMDs, and it's not quite a large enough to be three SMDs. Therefore, one of them just has to extend either across Bladensburg or across South Dakota. Otherwise, in order to keep it all contained, there would have to be three SMDs of less than 1,700 residents each, and that's well outside of the, uh, the guidelines of 1,900 to 2,100. Finally, uh, Rhode Island Avenue as a natural boundary. Uh, lots of people were for it, lots of people were against it. Um, some want a hard boundary, others don't mind if SMDs cross uh, Rhode Island. Currently there are SMDs in 5C and E that cross Rhode Island Avenue. So similarly, some of the proposed maps have SMDs that span both sides of this major thoroughfare. So some support of the boundary is, um, you know, people that support it, uh, think that it can take the pressure off of any one commissioner being responsible for all the businesses along the corridor and having more hands to address public safety concerns. But at the same time, there are others who uh, believe that having more hands requires more communication and more cooperation, and that's not always as effective as we would like it to be. So they would prefer that SMDs not cross Rhode Island. So those are um, the three main issues that we noticed in the comments to date and I'm sure we'll get a lot more today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and kind of put up uh, the maps for you if Nolan can, can do that. And we're gonna um, open it up for some questions and comments now. 
Uh, but before we do so, I would just like to remind everyone of a few things. Here in Ward 5, we are respectful of our neighbors. We treat each other with kindness and dignity. When addressing concerns with the proposed maps, let's ask ourselves a few things. Does this change make me uncomfortable? And if so, why? Is the reason for my discomfort related to class or race or education? We all have to be cognizant of our inherent biases. How does significantly does this change actually impact my ability to live, work, play, and thrive in my community? Will this change result in hardship to me and or my neighbors? Or will this change result in new opportunities for me and my neighbors? Even though I might not like this change, how might it be in the best interest of my neighbors and the larger Ward 5 community? We inherently think of self, we have to remember that we are part of a broader community of nearly 90,000 Ward 5 residents and 700,000 residents of the district. And so sometimes personal sacrifice and a little discomfort is necessary for all of us. Thank you so much for being kind today, being respectful today. Um, this task force has worked really, really hard over the last month and to try to get this as, as right as possible. It's not gonna be right for everybody, but we hope that it is right for uh, our neighbors, our friends and our community here in Ward 5. Temi, if you will be monitoring the Q&A uh, function, if you um, want to ask a question in the Q&A, you can do so. At the same time, raise your hand and your rights can be elevated so okay. that you can ask your question uh, verbally. So I see a few- And Rafi, right now, we just have two raised hands from, I think it was Scott Roberts and then Ushina Evans. Oh, also, Betsy McDaniel has raised their hand. Okay. If um, someone can ele elevate those rights oh. so that these individuals can speak. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, elevate Miss uh, Uchenna Evans. It looks like Scott and Betsy lower their hands. Maybe they'll use the Q&A. Well, there's one in the Q&A, so we'll do um, Miss Evans up. I can stop sharing for a moment. Ms. Evans, did you want to share something? Oh, I wanted to provide comments on the maps if, if we're at that portion right now. Yeah, I think so. Please go ahead. Yes. yes okay, so I would like to um, discuss what I'm calling the ANC 5A01 carve out. Um, ANC 5A01, um, according to the 2020 census, has 2,389 residents, which I fully recognize is over the 2,100 limit. However, that SMD is fairly self-contained because of the Ward 4, Ward 5 boundary at Kennedy Street, the DC Maryland state line um, to the east, Fort Circle Park to the south, South Dakota Avenue to the west. So I am actually strongly advocating my, my I think my first preference, and I think the best preference is to actually keep it as is at 2,389 residents because it is self-contained by ward state boundaries and a large park. And as we see in each map, trying to carve out 200 to 300 residents has resulted in an SMD that is just doesn't make sense. In the first map, people in the 500 block and the 1200 block or 1300 block of Hamilton, or sorry, 1200 block of Hamilton would be in one SMD from what I can tell, but people in the middle would be in a different SMD. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. In the other two maps, that carve out of residents, and I should disclose I'm in that carve out, um, we would be put Caddy Corner across South Dakota Avenue with folks in North Michigan Park. That also doesn't make a ton of sense to me. That makes a little more sense than map one, but maps two and three also don't make sense for the carve out. I don't know why the carve out was in place directly across South Dakota Avenue with the modern and then the maps adjusted from there because it's all one community, it's all Riggs Park. The development starts at Galloway, goes north, 
we are completely impacted on Galloway, Hamilton, Jefferson, Kennedy. By that project, I fully recognize it is all one A and C. As it is right now, I go to more than one SMD commissioner meeting to keep abreast. Um, but the way the this carve out, again, that, that I'm calling the ANC 5AL1 carve out, I would highly recommend keep ANC 501 as it is over the limit or adjust that carve out directly across West South Dakota Avenue with the modern and then adjust the maps from there. And that's it, thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Evans. I believe Scott was next. Um, Scott Roberts had his hand raised. It looks like Scott brought his hand down though. Okay, and then it was Lauren Rogers. And we do have a question in the chat about Catholic University by Diego. Okay, do you want to do the live question or the Q&A question? Um, you can do the live question while okay. I read this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great, Lauren, here you go. Give us a moment to promote. Ms. Rod, Commissioner Rogers. She's muted. She needs to unmute. Here I am. Okay, so I'm the commissioner of FCO2 currently, um, but I'm concerned about all three of these maps because uh, it the community that's bounded by Rhode Island Avenue, South Dakota Avenue, um, currently Vista is the south southern boundary. Um, so in this map, that would that whole area would change to become SMD 5 co 6 and it goes across the street into Fort Lincoln, but it only has the older sections of Fort Lincoln. Um, that's not currently the way the community functions and the, the carve out, the 5B07 coming across Rhode Island Avenue and all the way to Myrtle Avenue, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why that one uh, block stays, um, why it's in 5B07. I don't understand why 5B07 is coming across Rhode Island Avenue because that's not really um, how the community functions again. Um, discussion map two is even stranger. Uh, it moves five CO seven, so that's across South South Dakota Avenue. Um, this area is a community from South Dakota to Eastern, from Rhode Island to Bladensburg is a community, and so all of these kind of weird geography. Is, just doesn't make sense to me. And I don't think it's best for the, for the neighborhood. And then and finally, discussion map three um, is even worse. So I, I would say of the three, I would um, be most inclined to go with map, map number one, but number two is, I mean, number three, I'm sorry. It's just, Lauren, I'm going to share my screen so folks can follow. Thank that's you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this so is map one, and we're talking about five C. Right. So map one, where five C O six is, is where the current five C O two is. But I'm just concerned that the community is getting broken up. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I could respond just real quick about the Fort Lincoln has a challenge that Rafi talked about a little bit in our opening some of these lines come straight from the census blocks and it's um that's why you've got this weird dog leg but please that's so just some background but feel yeah. free to continue it, it i just um you know we're, we're over here on the border uh you know we're already down in the you know down in the valley up against the border it's um 
it feels like um it just feels like it's breaking up the community and I'm not I'm I'm not sure that uh that really serves the constituents. So map one of all of them, I would say, is the one that most kind of keeps the community together. But map two and map three are really are bad. I don't. Uh, so yeah. So currently, five uh, CO two goes from Myrtle Avenue uh, and covers all that goes. So it's up a block and covers all of the area. Um, down Bladensburg Road and around towards the bus garage. Um, so I've always thought that that was a strange district anyway. To It makes more sense to me to have the industrial things together. Um, but I understand why they were trying to make the district, you know, in the past. But I just don't think that this this the way it is now. It divides the community in half and then it just sort of paste together some areas that really aren't, uh, you know, aren't part of a continuous community. So, um, you know, I hope you guys are still working on this. That's all I have to say. I appreciate it. Um, do I want to go to Adrian? Yeah, Adrian had a question, had, had a live question, and then um, we have a few more questions in the chat. Yeah, no, I just wanted to, sorry about that, screen changed. Uh, I, I wanted to echo Ms. Rogers with regards to Fort Lincoln, and just to add a little bit more color to that, and why I think what she said was pretty important. When we read, I know the challenges because we helped draw some of these maps, but when you redistrict the old portion, the older legacy Fort Lincoln out after 10 years of new development and growth in the community, it sends a really bad message that, that this stuff isn't for you. You should be across the street when they were here before anyone else. I'm a homeowner of Fort Lincoln. And, you know, I, I thought our group did a very good job of trying to keep everyone whole and not redistricting people out after all of the development has come. So I want this group to be very careful and thoughtful about how they handle that. And, and actually, you know, I actually recommend people drive. And so you can see the different communities and the different housing and just the rich history that's there. And now we're telling those people, we're done. You can't be in Fort Lincoln. You're now a part of a new SMD. Um, so that was the first thing. I really thank Ms. Rogers for those comments. And then the second thing, just food for thought, how did the group come to the conclusion in every map that it looks like we're expanding ANCs versus potentially expanding to more commissions versus expanding the amount of single member districts in commissions? Um, and I, I wonder if that had been thought about as a way to keep some communities together versus new lines, which I think affect 5A and 5C um, with, I think Ms. Evans has spoke about too. Um, so just for your thought, but I, I really wanted to say, I appreciate Ms. Rogers because that is something that, you know, I wanna be very thoughtful about that we're not kicking out older residents and the optics that, that that sends. So, and also would the group be open to larger commissions versus these commissions where we still have some with, I, I don't see the map, maybe five or six, uh, commissions, which have an impact on operations because your budget is based off of how many SMDs you have. So just food for thought in the group as we discuss these, these first three discussion maps. So thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Adrian. I'm gonna go ahead and address the questions that are in the Q and A right now. So the first comes from Diego Rojas, who is the uh, 5A04 commissioner, um, who is asking us to consider keeping Catholic University as a single census block, um, as he's currently representing uh, that SMD and it has had um, a, a commissioner for the past three years. Um, we will definitely consider that. We also have to keep in mind that um, 
you know, you are currently there, someone was previously there. I hope that this is a trend um, that will continue for the next 10 years until we're able to uh, do this again. Um, but we also have to look at, you know, the history of that particular uh, SMD. So we will definitely take that into consideration um, highly, especially since you're, you're currently serving. Um, we have a question from Connor Shaw. It's a process question. And his question is, um, do the chairs have a preferred map? We do not. Um, and if not, are we going to distribute a final proposed draft for folks to comment on before submitting it to the council? The full task force will have to review and vote on any map that is uh, submitted to the council. So the entire task force will uh, be responsible for uh, approving the final map ahead of its uh, submission to the council. Um, and then Jeremiah Montague has asked, is the intent of the task force to walk away from this meeting, having settled upon one of the three maps as the only choices? Our hope leaving this meeting is to not settle on one map, but to eliminate maybe some maps or eliminate some options. So perhaps, you know, today maybe we take the Catholic University split off the table, or, you know, maybe we settle some things that way. Maybe we can all agree like, all right, map free is the best place to start. And let's now see how we can fix map three to address the questions that people have. So no, the, the idea isn't that we're all gonna be like, yes, great, map two, let's all go with it. The idea is that we can say, all right, map one's trash, get rid of that one. Map three is no good, get rid of that one. Map two is something maybe we can all work with and let's use the input that we've received online and the input that we're receiving today to um, make that map the best map that it can be. That's the goal today. I hope that answers you all's questions. And I guess we can get back to the live ones. I was going to say, I, I can offer, I think um, that's, I appreciate that, Rafi. And uh, there are a few other things that maybe we can talk about. I think the Catholic University split is great. I do think the um, the comment that Ms. Evans brought up is, is interesting. Having looked at the Riggs Park, North Michigan Park divide there um, and whether or not we, we should consider based on geography and the way that um that neighborhood is set up in the corner of the ward if it if it could exceed that 2100 number um i think that's worthy of consideration um and i, I saw that also come up in some of the comments Diego raised his hand, so I'm not sure if we if we needed more clarity. Or did you want to speak, Diego, since Rafi has addressed your question? I think he's coming in. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for all your hard work. As always, you know, you guys should be proud of what you've done in serving the community in such an awesome way. So thank you for doing this everything you guys have done so far. And I just kind of wanted to add on and touch a little bit about my first uh, question about splitting the Catholic census block. So setting aside the commissioner, you know, filling the vacancy, like I said, um, you know, I'm a first year here and a resident at Catholic University. And, um, you know, I plan on serving for as long as, you know, the census block is intact still. Um, and then I know previously too, another resident here also served for uh, three years, if I remember remember correctly. Um, and that wasn't too long ago. But just that, let, let, let aside that alone, there's still the, what I think isn't right is splitting a community directly in half into two separate, because Catholic University Census Block is definitely a community, and splitting that into two separate um, commissions, not even SMDs, as proposed in Map 1, it's just kind of troubling to me, um, you know, to have an SMD be split into 5E and then to 5B, where it's two completely separate uh, commissions, like I said. Um, I just have a little issues with that, um, as well as, you know, the fact that there is 
as I said, myself as being the commissioner of 5004 now, um, and a little bit of a track record of that vacancy being filled, and it looks very helpful for the future as well. So I just wanted to bring that to light and um, really discuss the Catholic University census block split. So that's all I have. I just wanted to bring that to light. Thank you. Raise my hand. Early, we see you. Go ahead. I just want to know when has anybody looked into the constituents who are on the campus of Catholic University? Are they registered constituents that's been counted in the census? I mean, we talk about land, are we talking about people? And I mean, I haven't been on, I haven't been in 5A in a while, but I know before it switched over with the last census, Catholic University was not anyone living there that was part of 5A. So it'd be interesting now, are we talking about people who live there? And we've documented that there are residents who are counted like we have all across any other quadrum in our city. So I just want to be clear about that because I'm totally confused. I heard a young man saying it's like this is a community being divided when you're not part of the community. Your students come and go and do what you have to do. I'm just trying to be very clear for myself because I read that and just wanted to be clear about it. Thank you. Yeah, the... Um... The census, I think, has about 1,900 students uh, or 1,900 residents on the block that contains Catholic, and it's pretty much just the campus. So I'm pretty sure that is on-campus housing uh, and folks that were living there on campus whenever the date is that the census is done. Um, as far as residents, that sometimes is the problem uh, with the vacancies. Pre previously, I understand the cycle of, of getting petitions over the summer doesn't work because the, the kids aren't back in school yet. So they, it's it starts vacant, but then somebody can submit their, it's BOE certifies the vacancy and then they can, um, uh, and then they can fill it with a student who submits petitions or whatever. But um, that's just some background on the issue. I think uh, that we have maps that did both that, that split it tried to split it between two uh, SMDs to ensure there could be a commissioner all the time and then um, others that kept it as it is an SMD, I think primarily in, in the 5A neighborhood. There others with raised hands. There are not. Raffi, I think it's just a lot in the chat. A question and answer, one question and answer in the chat somewhere. Ms. Evans wanted more background on the, right. that carve out in Briggs Park. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find quite, there's a question, um, Ushina has a question in the Q&A, mm -hmm. but a lot of comments in the chat, and I'm trying to make sure everybody, everybody has access to the chat and can see these comments. Mm -hmm. But for questions, Ushina asks, will the 5A subgroup please provide some information and rationale for what is going, going on with the choice of manual, how to treat ANC 5A01 carve out? Is there anybody here from the 5A subgroup that wants to answer that? Yeah, this is uh, Anthony Hood. I guess I'm the only one from 5A. First, let me say good evening, everyone. And I appreciate all the work having done this twice before. I keep bringing that up. Um, but let me just say that we have heard that loud and clear. And I think we are passing on to our co-chairs now who, who is working these three maps. And I think that's being considered, at least in the last meeting that I had uh, with um, one or two of the co-chairs, so we do get it. We get the picture about keeping Riggs Park and having grown up over there, I understand the, the um, importance of keeping those areas uh, where they are. So I think we're gonna revisit it. I don't know, it'll be up to the chairs and us, but I, I, we've heard that uh, to Miss Evans. Uh, the reason we were trying to make the numbers work, 
We were trying to make the numbers work, and we couldn't go down into 5E. We thought about 5B, so we were just trying to make it work, and we knew when we all came together, we would come up with a uh, solution. So uh, just back to you, Ms. Evans. We have heard you loud and clear, and uh, we will make sure that we consider that and keep pushing that as well. So thank you. And if she has any questions she can, for me, she can put them back in the chat. Did I see Jeremiah? Has his hand, Jeremiah Montague, has his hand raised? He actually should be up here because he was the one I would have had to respond. I didn't see him. Um, so I don't know what's, what's he doing. coming in now. Okay, good. We might need to keep him in. Thanks. Did we lose him? Yeah, he. I thought he was coming. It too. He said, there he is. Are we back in? Okay. Right. It, was, it does look like there's a couple of hands. Mm -hmm. It is. All right, we'll do, we'll let Jeremiah speak, and then we'll uh, we've got Ms. Elmira Jones and Colleen Costello, and with her hands raised as well. Good afternoon or good evening. Can you hear me? Yep. Is it my turn to, to sound the horn? Please, by all means. Um, I, I, let me um, first say uh, to Anthony and to everybody else, um, I did, didn't get an invite to the meeting. Um, so I just, I just ended up as general population. I mean, and, and as um, Mr. Hood had did say, we did try to do the best job that we could uh, there was a misinterpretation about the statistical deviation, um, but that's something that can be adjusted fairly easily. And we did our damnedest, um, pardon the language, but we did our damnedest to try and be fair and equitable and trying to keep communities together. Um, particularly in 5A, um, there was a small um, southeastern section above the Fort Circle Park which um, contained like, I think 300 people or whatever. And that was used to try and balance out um, the area that was south of uh, Fort Circle Park. Um, I am, for, as a matter of full disclosure, I am an ANC commissioner uh, in 5C07. Um, I am a resident. So one of the things that it told us as we became commissioners, you do not abrogate your uh, ability to act as a resident when you become an ANC commissioner. So I actually held a meeting um, with my some constituents and residents to hear what they felt about the maps. And one of the, um, I actually wrote a, a letter of testimony um, that I ended on the record and I sent it to uh, co-chair Sandy. I didn't have everybody else's email addresses, so I couldn't send it to them. Um, but speaking specifically for the folks that live in five, uh, 5C or represented by 5C, we have a concern about the reach of 5B uh, or the proposed reach of 5B across literally, uh, if you were a, a warrior, it would be the march of the troops across South Dakota and then once you get across South Dakota, then you carve out uh, the existing 5C01 North, which would be Woodridge North. And then for some reason, there was this, this impetus to move part of that across South into the um, area uh, where Brentwood Road is and South Dakota and Rhode Island, da 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 da. So it did make sense to, to pull that little block out of old Woodridge to accommodate the new 5B. As far as the, the, the other maps we, we, were, we were concerned and people are really not happy about is I would like for 
the chairs or the, the commissions to explain to us what was the impetus or the urgency or the need to eliminate um, Langdon Park, Langdon Elementary, Langdon Rec Center, and the Woodridge Library out of 5C. And, 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 and in, in that one particular comment, I'm parochial about that because those residents, um, you know, a former commissioner of Duncey, myself, uh, Dolores Bouchard, Cheryl Dixon, you know, those folks have invested a great deal of sweat equity in their community and in their single member district to bring it from being neglected in the, in the shadows. Okay, so we don't, we don't understand why it was so important to move that elsewhere. I did hear Commissioner, I uh, mean, uh, Task Member Crockett say in her opening comments was that change is inevitable. I agree. Um, change can be uncomfortable. I agree. But one of the things that, that is, I think about important about redistricting is that communities need to remain whole and their representation um, and how they resolve issues uh, or in, in a particular community um, basis, regardless of census tract. Now, as the, uh, having worked on five, uh, five, eight, four, first short period of time, I understand that geography sometimes and the layout of census tracts makes rational decisions almost impossible, okay? And, and, and I, I get that, okay? But in, in, in my, my one moment of parochialism, <laughs> y'all folks got to explain it to us why it was so important. I, I, when when uh, Commissioner, uh, I keep calling you Commissioner Crockett, Task Member Crockett, uh, Co-Chair Crockett, um, she said, well, in some cases, we wanted not to have the burden of the business districts to be, to be solely fall on one person. Um, and I guess taken away from my area in 5C, um, which I have the, 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 the center Woodridge commercial district, if I go over to 5 and 5B and look at the split on 12th Street, Okay, and then the decision in, in, in trying to make all of that work. Now, the, it seems like Moses is parting the waves and, and saying, well, you know, one person shouldn't be responsible for this. It should be multiple people. The public perception, and everybody has my email address, they disagree, is that there were conscious efforts to divide rather than unify and use numbers as a basis for justification of the divisions. And I know that people are sensitive to me even saying that, but I am, as most people who know me, I try to be factual and I try to be to the point. Yeah, I wonder if we couldn't, um, I, I'm actually looking at the, uh, do you mind if I jump in here for a second, Jeremiah? Because um, I've got the map that uh, Adrian and his crew put together for 5C, which is very similar to the current one, I actually think might help answer some questions. Do you mind if I share this, Adrian? Does this make sense to you? Go for it. Um, because you can see, this is, I mean, did, did the SMD boundaries change? Well, there's a new SMD in Fort Lincoln, right? Yes. And then I think they largely stayed the same, right? So this would be like your preference, Jeremiah. Yeah, so in, in, in this particular map presentation, I wholly agree that when it says 5303 and 5208 is a, an appropriate representation for the folks that live in that area. It doesn't segregate old 
Fort Lincoln, as some of the maps do from the new people in Fort Lincoln, okay? Or the folks that live in the, um, uh, the what is it, the Peterson and, uh, you know, where the senior towers are and uh, the whatever. This, and, and, and this, just speaking of this area of 5C uh, for, in Fort Lincoln, I don't have a problem with that. As Commissioner Rogers has said, 5CO2 has always been a funky layout, okay? It, well, it, if I could just just tease that out for a second, I think you're getting at something here because um, you're right, like neighborhood cohesion, like that's very important. And so that's what we have in this map. But I could also argue that people who are represented by 2,400, 2,500 people are represented by one single member are disenfranchised because they have less representation than somebody that is represented by 1900 people. So that's not to say that we can't argue this point and take it down or, what, or whatever, or to, but that's like the devil's advocate. And that's really what the crux of all this is, is like, what, where do we pick your poison and which one, um, you know, which, which, which road do you go down? So not to interrupt if, if you were going to continue. No, I, I, I guess, because um, I see some agreeing heads and some headlight looks and this, that, and the other. So um, I, I think I made my, and, 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 and the bottom line, as I said in my testimony was, this all equates to money. And some people only understand it when it's money. So each one of those numbers, although it represents a person, as of the census day, in the bottom line, as far as Madam Mayor and the council are concerned and the chief financial officer, there are allotments attached. It's, it's not a one for one dollar per person. It's, I think it's like 80 cents per, uh, per person or something like that. But then when you get into redistrict, redistricting, which this will take place January, 2023, right? The, the monies that will go definitely moves and, and, it, and, it, and it becomes, it, you know, it becomes a burden on some, some, some um, single member, uh, some commissions and some single member districts and then not on others. Um, I'm, simply, I'm simply saying as the voice of my people, <laughs> which is what I'm supposed to be, okay? And as a resident, I still go back, don't, don't tinker with Langdon Park, you know. I live in, I uh, proudly say, because I'm a historian, I live in West Woodridge, okay? Most people don't even know what West Woodridge is. And the folks that live above um, Rhode Island Avenue live in Sherwood. If you ask them where Sherwood would, they couldn't tell you, okay? But those make up greater Woodridge. And those are integral components of this. So beyond the numbers and the statistical deviations and this, that, and the other, those are the, 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 the as, as what, what, did, what, did, what did Republicans call it? The, 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 the dining room table um, conversations that happen. And that is what we should be trying to make the best adjustment for. And then I'll shut up. Yeah, I mean, so I guess just to, for some of the folks in the chat, how these districts got drawn the way they did. Um, I mean, you really sort of pick a starting point and pick a um, an area that you think is makes sense. For instance, down by the metro, assuming that 5C05 and what we're looking at on the screen here you know, it's going to be bounded by the tracks and New York Avenue and Rhode Island Avenue in the north. You, do, you, um, you know, there's not a lot of options. You just start building um, a geography to make about 2,000 people. And then you build another one and another one and another one. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's largely how, how these get, um, get drawn. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this map, I don't know if we could pass this map down at the council. And I, I would love to hear from the larger committee if they felt like they could support a um, a map that has you know 24, 2500 person SMDs. 
And, and I would also like to point out that there's continued growth there. So it's not that it's 2,400 people today, it's you know well over already. And in another year, two years, three years, it's going to continue to be well over. And it's definitely not fair to have that uh, lack of representation for the residents there. They deserve to have you know, the 19 to 2100 uh, commissioner to a resident uh, ratio as the rest of us do in this city um, and forcing them to have 25, 2600 people per commissioner um, for the sake of maintaining this community, I think is, could be unfair. And I would also like us to think differently. We, we keep talking about where pushing people out of Fort Lincoln. How about we're bringing people in? Like there are ways to, to call folks in as opposed to pushing people out. And so we can look at that in, in that way as well. And the idea that there was, you know, old Fort Lincoln's being pushed out, unfortunately, older Fort Lincoln is built along the perimeters. And in order to maintain contiguous uh, SMDs as is required, it's the areas along the perimeters that would join with their neighbors who are across Bladensburg or across South Dakota. It's not, um, it's nothing nefarious. It's, it's th just the way things have been built and, and that's where we are. But there was, there was no intention behind it uh, that was nefarious or, or, or disingenuous. Um, we're trying to get the most representation for the people who live in that community. And that meant having three SMDs as opposed to two SMDs divided amongst nearly 5,000 residents. Well, let me, so that was, I'm sorry, Jeremiah, since that was my map, I just, and I wanna follow the ground rules that Rafi put out there. Um, and I understand we're all just trying to come to a conclusion. So there's no personals one way or the other, you know, we all still live here. But I do have to counter, I don't have a, a, a crystal ball, but the area that was redistricted out of Fort Lincoln is fairly static. And not only are we taking people out of a community that they've been in for countless years, and we have this new development that I mentioned before, but we're taking 95% of the senior homes out of a community that they were there before, before everyone else, all the newer people who spent five, six, seven, 800,000. And what is that message that we, we're telling them? So I know there is a diversity issue that we're looking at, but age is a demographic. Um, and if we take the entire senior population and all those senior homes and jet them somewhere else while all the people who spent upwards of a million dollars in our house, I think that's a tough sell. And I would be willing to go to the council and say, this is why we didn't do it, because we want to be inclusive to older term residents, to seniors who are in senior homes, to be a part of a community that they helped to grow before the new people like myself came in. So I'm willing to make that argument. And again, that stretch is fairly static with a lot of things that aren't going to be redeveloped. Now, I know we're not supposed to take future growth into in the play, but I, there will be more growth in the new 5CO3 then there will be in that section there, just based off of the framework there. So I just wanted to counter that a little bit because the map Nolan put up was the map. And I wanted you all to know that that was the thought process that the 5C group really thought long and hard about. Are we going to disenfranchise our seniors uh, who were here before all of us? And, and, and that's why that map looks like that. But I'm glad we're having this conversation. I like the viewpoints, but, I, but the question was asked, who would defend that map, I would be the first in line to defend it with probably every member of the existing 5CO3 um, and Fort Lincoln. All right, I wanted to, um, Commissioner Costello has been uh, waiting for a minute. I don't, want to, I don't want to chop off this 5C conversation, but she's been very patient. Thank you, Nolan. Um, hold on, let me get my video on here. Okay. Um, I, can pull I, hope up a, my, I can pull can up you, a map if you want it, but I'll just leave you on for now. Yeah, um, I'm gonna, I just wanna offer my comments on all three of the maps, if that's okay. Um, I hope this background puts everyone in a nice lighthearted mood for a minute. Um, okay. <laughs> so let's just start with map one and we'll go chronologically. Um, since I don't know which way um, 
the task force is going to go in terms of which map it eliminates or keeps or whatever. I just want to make sure I give um, my feedback, which is based on um, what I've heard from my constituents and is also based on my experience. Um, so I, I want to say first, thank you to everyone for all of your hard work. I've, I've uh, fiddled around with the um, S3 map system and it's not easy. I know that this was really challenging. Like once you start creating new boundaries for one ANC, it has a domino effect on everything else. And yes, some of these, um, these blocks are very oddly drawn and they don't make it easy. So I know this was not an easy effort and um, just wanna thank you all. Um, on map one, I wanted to, this is kind of creative, a very different and unexpected um, map from you guys, but I wanted to point out one tiny thing just based on um, what I know about the neighborhood and how they, how neighbors interact and um, what people tend to view as more of a cohesive neighborhood. Um, up in the, um, let's see, where you have 5A06, where it, it uh, abuts 5B02. So you've got the bright green and the turquoise green next to each other. Um, the so boundary- Dan, Are you able to put up this map? Yeah, which one? Do you want to do the whole map, map or, or zoomed in? Map, map one would be helpful. Um, okay, yeah. Sorry, uh, I wasn't looking at, at the video screen, so I didn't know if you had it up or not yet. Oh, I was my looking bad. at my, yeah, no, my computer screen. <laughs> or I can share my screen if you want, then I can use my pointer. I think we're up. Okay, so where you have 5A06 and 5B02, where the border meets, um, it's the bright green and the turquoise green. And the road um, where, where that boundary is, is 13th place northeast. Um, yes, so that is actually, you know, a boundary I hope we can consider moving if this is a map that the task force task force moves ahead with because um, the folks who are right in that little um, kind of tip of the turquoise part for 5BO2, they actually fit much better um, within the community north of Michigan Avenue. Um, they're, you know, the people on 13th place Northeast, like their direct neighbors are going to be across the street from, from them on the other side of 13th place Northeast. Likewise, you have um, some folks moving toward, moving east toward 14th Street. Um, again, these are, their natural community is with the folks who are on the north side of Michigan Avenue. Um, and so to the extent that it might be feasible, I think that they should all stay in the same SMD um, because you know, that's kind of their natural community. Um, unfortunately, these arterial roads, South Dakota and Michigan kind of, um, kind of block them in and kind of create this, you know, uh, this kind of neighborhood boundary for them. Um, and so that's just been my experience in, in terms of knowing my neighbors and knowing who they, you know, uh, who they associate most, most with, what issues are of most concern to them. I think that's one little tiny area that I think should be kept in the same SMD, whichever way it ends up going. Um, I did also notice that 5A06 has fewer than 1900 residents. So maybe adding those residents to 5A06 would help with that a little bit. Um, okay, can we do map two? Oh, I'm sorry. I did wanna to say too, just real quick, the Catholic university split, I also find very confusing and um, as the as the commissioner who represents what's what's listed in this new um, 5B03 district, I will say that those residents don't share any sense of community with Catholic University, um, you know, in terms of common interests or anything like that. So I'm going to be another um, another person saying, yeah, the split doesn't really work that great. So that's my two cents on that. And then now I'm ready to go to map two. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, map two. Um, in terms of natural community and shared interests, again, I wanna point out one small thing here. So um, let's see, 
I don't know if I could actually share my screen. Would that be would that be possible? Because I have the map up on my screen and I want to use my pointer to show you exactly what I'm looking at. Oh, I can't do it. It says Here, it's Here, hold disabled. on. I can give you the permission. Okay. Uh... Otherwise, it's kind of hard to describe exactly what I'm trying to point at. <laughs> I don't know if I can. Um, okay. I can I can try to describe it. Um, sorry, it doesn't look like I can. It's okay. Go ahead and put your map back up, and I'll just try to. Oh wait, guide no, your... I got it. Yeah, you want me to try it? Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, great. I got right. it. Okay, good. Okay, perfect. So map two. Um, don't mind my little boundaries. This is actually what the current five bo five boundaries look like. So I just want to point out one small little segment of this neighborhood here. Um, I understand wanting to use 12th Street as the boundary for a lot of SMDs. It makes sense in some respects. In some respects, though, it doesn't. And one of the one of the concerns that a lot of folks right here have had between, I would say, Quincy and Michigan Avenue is that um, some of the businesses on this stretch, we have a couple of liquor stores. Um, the residents have experienced some nuisance issues. And um, I think in, we've got the businesses on both sides of the street that, that residents have had issues with. And I think it would probably be beneficial because these residents here are affected to some degree by businesses on this side of the street. I think it would be beneficial to at least keep these two squares together with the rest of this here. Um, we have had to um, negotiate um, agreements with some of the liquor stores, for instance, um, you know, to address some of residents' concerns about noise, trash, loitering, et cetera. Um, and so those are, those are agreements that we've signed with businesses on this side of the street, but that affect residents on this side of 12th street. And so I think because these interests are tied together, it would make sense to keep them in the same SMD so that they have the same commissioner representing their concerns that involve businesses on both sides of the street. I don't know if that makes sense, but let me know if you'd like me to reframe that. No, that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, that's 113 residents in those two blocks. Okay. Um, another, and it, another 220 in the two blocks below them. Okay. And and again, you know, I'm looking at fewer than 1900 residents Yeah, so you here. could take 113 without a problem. If you were to yep. move all four of those blocks, you would be over 2100. Yeah. Now, obviously it has domino effects because then 5DO2 would be down, you know, by the same number. But I think we can probably... Well, I don't know. Maybe we can borrow from some of our neighbors. I'm not really sure. <laughs> well, that's good feedback. I mean, I think, uh, of course, the hope is that all the changes we make balance out. So, uh, I guess that's what the challenge is. Yeah, that, that's always the goal. Um, I know it's tricky math sometimes. Um, let me just go to map three real quick, and I'll just share what's on my screen. Um, and thanks for letting me do this real quick. Okay, here we go, map three. You know, I actually thought this one um, made the most sense in terms of maintaining a lot of the same existing boundaries and geographies. Um, I think I understand why these areas were included as part of, you know, the new boundaries. I was just going to suggest that if you're trying to minimize changes to current boundaries to the extent possible, um, you could maybe swap these out, like take these out of 5B05 and replace it with one or two or three of these blocks to keep it mostly the same um, as what it is now. I don't know what the number count is. I don't know what the head count is here for the number of residents, but I just wanted to share About that. About 120. Uh, there's nobody, there, these two blocks are, the two blocks on the left are zero, Metro. zero. Yep. The other are about 60 each and the other one. So 160 and 60 or 120, 120? 60 and 60, total 120. Okay, got it. And then this one right here was one something. I think you said it was one something last time. Both of them together, yes, 113. The, the, okay. So the one below it is only 41. Um, this one's only 41, okay. Yeah, but I think if you scroll down, you can see that um, 
this uh, lower left 5BO4 has 1974. So if we were to add 120 residents, then it would be over the 2100. Not saying it can't happen, but I'm just sort of using this to like tease out some of what, um, you know, everything is, uh, it actually is a zero sum game in some ways when it comes Understood. down to moving the lines. I Understood. No, I didn't know that's what the counts were. Um, so that's actually helpful to know. That was just going to be my suggestion. Obviously, if the math doesn't work, then the, the math doesn't work. Um, <laughs> but it looked to me like this map tried to keep most of the current boundaries as consistent as possible. And so I was just going to say, you know, if that's the goal and you wanted to try and continue to do that, maybe just swap these. But yeah. if that's not if it's not feasible then you can ignore my suggestion. No, that's great. Um, I appreciate it. Um, otherwise, again, thank you all for your hard work. This is really helpful. And um, I, if I could just ask one question, how will the task force um, take into consideration all of the feedback it's receiving? Is it going to be weighted in any way? Um, you know, what value is given to some of the feedback that was given on the form? And can residents who haven't had a chance to weigh in still do that before you make a final decision. Well, that is a great question. Um, I think I it, was a, it was a compound question. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, there's not a formula as far as the form goes or anything. Um, I mean, I, I, I wrote out a little tally of residents who indicated where they lived and what their preferences were on the map, which is helpful considering some folks didn't leave like contextual comments. Um, but other and other folks who did, I, you know, I think um, just looking at those issues and seeing, uh, seeing how we could address them. Um, as far as weighing in going forward, I'm not exactly sure what forum that would take uh, and what Oh, yeah, I can clarify. I'm sorry. I just meant using the form, the uh, Google form that had been circulated. I think there, there wasn't a lot of notice. I think it was only maybe six or seven days, maybe six days um, notice for people to provide feedback. And I heard from some people who said, you know, I haven't even had a chance to sit down and look at all of this in detail. Would the task force be open to giving folks maybe until... Friday, say, um, to, to continue to offer additional feedback. I don't know when you meet next, so. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, know either, but uh, okay. I, mean, I don't have a problem turning on the form. Uh, again, I don't want to create false hope that, I mean, I know we're, it's going to be a couple of days before we can get together anyway, so we can certainly turn it on now and um, and and accept what, what comes in. It was up until uh, this afternoon, so we were able to catch whoever came in overnight. Um, if if that was a commissioner, I'm going to take uh, Mr. Joshua Beatty from the audience and bring him up to ask a question. Or did he just bounce? And while you do that, oh, um, he, he, never mind. He bounced. That's it. Okay, so there was a question in the Q and A on map three. Yeah, this came up in a lot in the form a lot. Yeah. So can we please talk through the explanation behind the two blocks that five C O seven pops across Rhode Island Avenue into five B O six? Thank you. I mean, I think that has to do with keeping the numbers. Um, we're making it balance. There's about 160 people in those three blocks. If it, my math is right. Um, but that did come up a couple times. I think there was some people liked Rhode Island Avenue as a, some people liked Rhode Island Avenue as a, Boundary others didn't. Um, I, I thought that was kind of a mixed bag in the comments. Um, because, you know, we're endeavoring to make these a specific population size, I think that often means that if, you know, 
in the middle of the ward, you you don't get those firm lines. Obviously, you know, you can't cross Florida Avenue. I think the geographic boundaries of 5D um, prevent much, much mixing across there. So uh, with those boundaries in place, you just um, draw the most compact districts you can. Joffrey Hatchett. Oh, sure. Hatchett has his hand. Jeff, are you? Yeah. Do you want to talk? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Um, to mix it up a bit here, since we've been discussing a lot of the northern part of the ward the entire meeting, uh, I thought I'd, I'd talk about the southern part down here in Trinidad and Carver Langston and whatnot. Um, I looked through all of the comments um, that were submitted by the public and I saw that there were really only three that discussed our part of the neighborhood uh, or of the ward. And I don't know if that's just because everybody's happy with what they saw and so they didn't feel that they needed to chime in or what. But um, one of those comments was from Connor Shaw and he said that he was concerned about the fact that it seemed like a lot of the SMD, proposed SMDs down in our part of the ward had sub 1900 um, people in them, 1800, 1700-ish. Um, and so I just, wanted to, I just wanted to elevate that and make sure that that was being looked at. Um, I know we did some, our, our uh, subgroup did some work there and it seemed like we were able to get a fair number of SMDs to get into the 1900 to 2100 um, preferred size, but I know it's it's tough given the boundaries. You you might run into a spot there where there's one that's horribly tiny. Um, like if you're just using Union Market, you end up with like a 1300 person SMD, and I know that's extremely small, um, and that might not be able to pass council muster. Um, if you could put the maps up, Nolan, I wanted to point out one thing really quick. Sure. This work. Yeah, great. Thanks. Um, so, uh, on map one and three, you've got that little part, uh, between New York Avenue and the railroad tracks that's across New York Avenue from Union Market. Uh, that's part of 5D01. Uh, has, has been moved out of 5C and into 5D. And we discussed that uh, as, a, as a good idea because there, there are, it's a very small population there. I believe it's only like 13 people, but it's a couple businesses uh, and you know, space that could potentially be redeveloped at some point in the, in the coming years. And that has more connections to the folks directly across New York Avenue than it does to people who are in Brentwood that are you know, a quarter to a half mile away from that location. So I, I like seeing that census block there as moved into 5D in maps one and three. It's not moved in, war, in um, map two. And I don't know if that was an oversight or intentional but I'd just like to see, you know, whichever map goes forward that we make sure to keep that little wedge there uh, as part of 5D. I think it makes more sense to keep it in 5D. It's, the, it's this one where we missed it? Yep. Yeah, okay. And then it's there and here. Yeah. I did notice that, um, I counted two comments from 5D residents on the forums, and we have this is the first comment uh, we've had on it. So, the um, yeah, the two folks who chimed in uh, on the forum are both long term, long term Trinidad residents. They've been involved in they were involved in the Trinidad Neighborhood Association when it was um, when it was actually working up and running um, for a long time. So they're 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 deeply involved in the community. And I thought they're, they both chimed in saying that they thought that if they had to pick one of the three maps, they liked the way Trinidad and Carver Langston were represented 
in map three. That's what and, I think. And I, and I feel like that's probably what a lot of people would agree on there. Um, you know, the, the way the lines are currently drawn, we've got a, Bladensburg is a hard boundary between Trinidad and Carver Langston. So the commissioners know which side they're representing there and the proposed maps all end up bleeding over Bladensburg one side or the other. And it's, you know, that's the way the numbers work. We know that's gotta be done to, to make the numbers work out. Um, but map three does the least of that. And it seems like it's the best solution there. I also think I like the fact that map three has all of Carver Terrace in one SMD and, you know, keeping so the folks in that apartment complex don't have to speak to three different commissioners to get their concerns addressed. Having just one commissioner, uh, that seems very, that's 5D03 there. Uh, 5D03, which is broken out it's broken out in the others yeah okay i see so i mean yeah I, I i would agree with both of them too that i think that map three of the ones that um of the three maps map three is kind of the the best for trinidad carver langston ivy city calidad union market just my hey. thoughts Commissioner Branham, welcome to the stage. Maybe, there we go. You're, the floor is yours, Commissioner Branham. If you want me to pull up a map, just let me know. I just have a process question. Uh, looking at uh, the map that we, we draw, 5E, 5E, e, and creates the uh, new uh, ANC 5F. Uh, I, my question is, uh, what was the uh, rationale? What was the reason for the map combining uh, current 5E08, 5E09 into one SMD? It may be valid. I just don't know what that what that reasoning is. And I attended all of the uh, uh, up noticed uh, redistricting for Ward 5, uh, but I never got, I never heard any commentary on for this. And even when the, uh, I don't know if there was a sub task force for uh, uh, 5E, which I never got an invitation to or notice about. So my issue or concern is what was the rationale for carving out uh, this new 5 Five F, you know. Preliminarily, there was uh, I was advised that the numbers uh, increased, but that would mean that SMD five E O eight five E O nine uh, would not so much be combined if the numbers increased. I just want to know. I just want to. You may. It may be valid. I just. I, I have not been presented or given an opportunity to comment on the rationale for combining 5E08 and 5E09 into a new single SMD. It may be there. I haven't heard it. I haven't read it. And the map doesn't, doesn't, does, does the map uh, that was presented does not uh, articulate the rationale or the handling of uh, Rumi I can take a stab at this. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen with a, a table of the, 
I mean, it's a, it's the cascading effect of, of drawing one line to the next. You're, you're currently 5E09, right, Commissioner Branham, or the... 5E08. 5E08. And, and um, so you're, you've increased here by a few, um, and I believe, understand your argument is that if you're increasing them, then we should be expanding the number of SMDs, not um, in, encroach upon as you feel. Um, I mean, but these other, uh, the other Southern, the, the, in order to draw districts on the Southern end, um, here, I'll share. This is the current 5E. So the new 5E05 doesn't look too much different than that, but it moves down a block because there's been population increases. So 5E06, um, you know, kind of shifts down a block and then 5E07 does the same thing. And that it just, it is the cascading effect um, from, from the overall population increases and in the, in the increase of population everywhere in the Northwest uh, end of the ward. I I'm, I'm still not gathering the because it the it also uh, put that line it separates uh, takes off the uh, the western part of North Capital from five e o uh, from five e and uh, I I'm simply trying to get the rationale because it has not been explained to me accurately or fully why there has to be, why the has to, uh, 5 e 8 5 e 9 in the new all maps is combined, are combined into one S and D. Hmm. I just, I, I, I just, I just don't, I, I have not heard what yet. It may be rational. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard the justification for it. Other than to eliminate, not to eliminate, but to separate uh, parts of Eckington and all, or all of Eckington and Edgewood and uh, possibly uh, 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 Stronghold from 5E, I mean, from, uh, out of 5E into a separate, or to separate them from Bloomingdale. I just have I have just I have not had I'm not, not been presented with uh, a salient argument for this for the for this map design. Well, uh, and well, if I was there if I would, had the opportunity to have been part of the discussion and heard the argument because there had to have been an argument, a rationale for doing it, and it has not been presented. I haven't seen it or heard it or read it. I mean, it was the drawing of the 2000 member districts starting from the uh, most Southwest corner of Ward 5 uh, that resulted in lines that we have in the Bloomingdale section there. Um, if it's okay with folks, I'm gonna turn to Commissioner Barnes um, who may have a comment on this as she's another adjacent commissioner here in this topic or in this area. I don't know, maybe Commissioner Barnes didn't try again, but I, she may not be actually joining us. Um, I can, there's a question in the Q&A 
Oh, Commissioner Barnes is in here. Please take the yes. ahead. I'm unmuted. I, I actually see the rationale behind it because of the fact that you've actually divided portions of um, 5E down the middle of North Capitol, meaning you actually took 5E09 um, that was split between the two and now it's actually providing a separate single member district for its stronghold. And I see that rationality because of the fact that they can use their own single member district. And then the current commissioner will not have to do double duty because now I actually attend two sets of meetings concerning two sets of uh, civics association. So I have no complaint of the way it is now for map two and map three, but I prefer map three. And I see where you just pushed everything else down because of the fact that you took stronghold and put it by itself, which I think they would probably want. I was trying to get the chair of stronghold on, but she's on another meeting. So, but that's my opinion of it. I have no problem with the way it is now. But that stronghold impacts 5E08. Probably you're not. I, yes. I, but but uh, it it uh, you know that does not impact dramatically or address my 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 uh, concern. Not so much concern, but my uh, uh, my uh, observation that eliminating stronghold because I'm putting it completely on the uh, west on the west side of North Capitol. Okay, that's that's okay. If the issue is you just want to get you want to separate use North Capitol as a dividing line, but that impacts all of five E. That that benefits and, and affects uh, Eckington, Edgewood. Uh, and those 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 communities. My concern is that that does not give the rationale for combining five EO eight and five EO nine because you took out stronghold. Well, the numbers are adding up. You know, the, 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 to two thousand plus. The numbers are adding up by combined. The numbers may are adding up. I'm not. I'm not trying to uh, 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 assert that it may not be rational. I'm simply saying that the argument that the numbers are increasing is a just is is a justification for not combining SMDs. If the numbers of the people is increasing, that is not a rationale for combining SMDs. Well, your numbers actually didn't increase from what I know over here. That's not what I was advised. No, but you you live over I, here. You I, have no, no I understand. I'm saying on. I'm saying that the rationale, the preliminary information I received was that my SMD numbers increased. Therefore... But where did they increase from? As I said, I have not been presented with the facts. So, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Burnham, 5E08, as it currently stands, has 2,558 residents in it. And that is, in fact, an, an increase from, from previously. That's the, that's the current state of 5E08. And I hear what you're saying that it, logically you don't understand how things expanding would then result in combinations. But you have to also figure in 
the redistribution. It's not just an always an adding together. There's also a redistribution. So 5E was in fact one uh, A and C. We now have a 5E and a 5F. So obviously a lot of the 5E former uh, uh, SMDs are now part of this new 5F or 5X, whatever we're calling it on whatever map you're looking at. So it wasn't just, a, it's not a simple add or subtract. There's redistribution that goes on um, throughout, not just your SMD, but throughout your entire uh, ANC and then throughout the entire ward. So I, I, I see- I get that. EO8 I, I, is 2558 uh, residents at present. I get that. All I'm saying is that this information is coming at this moment. It would, you know, and I had no, uh, and I, as I've always said, there, there may be rationale or justification, but it was never, it had not been presented to me. And nor was I given the opportunity to participate in that discussion, and I was attending all of these public meetings. Now, Commissioner Barnes uh, may have uh, has uh, ha ha it's clear that Commissioner Barnes has uh, received that information. I did not, and as I've always said, there may be logical, rational for that, but it was never presented to me. It was, and no was when I was in these public meetings did it come up that this was being proposed until I saw the map. And when the map was, was drawn, there was no, I didn't have an opportunity to talk to those who were, who drew the map as to why the map was being drawn that way. And I think that it would, would have been helpful if the public had a greater opportunity to see at the map, comment on the map in the at the uh, subgroups rather than having to get it later and then come and comment on it. And a lot of some of the concerns that have been addressed throughout this redistricting process may have been, could have been uh, uh, avoided if the if there was a wider public participation in the discussion. Uh, I know COVID changed a lot for this uh, redistricting. Previous redistricting, we were together, everybody could walk up, have face-to-face -face discussion, put big into wall, you know, on, on the map at, at one time. And, and uh, here the, the uh, discussions, you know, together in, in, a, in a wider, in a more open forum. This one makes that redistricting process more, more, more challenging. And so, uh, you know, all I'm uh, uh, trying to get at is that uh, it would have been helpful to me as a commissioner to be a part of that discussion that was redrawing my uh, SMD so that I could have a better understanding and to learn why it was being done rather than having to wait on the 22nd of March to get that information. When I was uh, attending all the meetings that were, that were done, and I was raising time, to, uh, that, was, that was being done. All right, thank you, Commissioner Branham. Um, there's a couple of questions in the chat about, about Woodridge or going back and looking at 5CO2. Um, I can try and field those um, to the best extent possible. Uh, the question, map three has 5CO2 stretching from the east side of five, South Dakota all the way past Langdon Park. Um, and that is the map that we are looking at right here. Um, so this, uh, this, this sort of creeps along Bladesburg into, um, into Fort Lincoln, has the 
South Woodridge here, um, all the way down the tracks. This census tract right here, that's a triangle, has about 100 people. I believe that is a shelter. And then um, this census tract right here has 440 people. So that's about a quarter of your population of the SMD there. If you look at map two, we did it differently. Um, the, I cannot remember the name of the facility. Does anybody remember? What is the place where all the Woodridge and the Brentwood Civic Associations used to meet? Um, there's 400 people that live there and that presents something of a challenge when drawing these maps. Um, so, you know, I could- Office of Aging. Oh, no, the, ho the home for the aging. The home, home for the for aging, aging, yeah. On 18. So if we got, you know, if we took this off um, and swapped it out, that me, you know, that just moves the lines over everywhere else. Um, and, and some of that happened here. And there's a new SMD that has the Home for Aging and Langdon Park and Langdon Elementary and goes all the way down to the tracks. Um, but that really squeezes 5C07, uh, the darker brown thing here centered on um, south around three sides of South Dakota and Rhode Island. Um, and I mean, this is a third way to deal with it. Um, here we're trying to keep like this 5C06 district more compact, um, and which leads to different shapes, which we heard some feedback on. I think I think we've definitely heard some feedback on around the Langdon Park area and keeping that together and what that is. Um, so I don't know if that directly answers your question, but that I mean, I'm trying to just trying to explain how we got these maps and why some of these shapes are funny and and um, you know it's sometimes just not possible. I'd love to be able to draw these districts right along Rhode Island and South Dakota and make them pretty squares, but um, the people would not add up in that context. Uh, we've got someone from the audience who I'll bring up here. Oh, that was passed. I don't know if he doesn't want to be promoted. Oh, he's come. I think we're getting him. Mr. Levesk. Mr. Levesque, are you trying to, to uh, talk? Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we're, we got you. Okay. Um, Please go ahead. So 5X01 at the top uh, on the far left, it uh, has a little notch at the bottom there, which is uh, 5X02. Is it possible to move this little notch over to Second Street? It seems to make sense. I don't think the population is that different. That way you don't have this little, that little notch where you're bordered, it's sort of like a, a peninsula. Both of these are, are like little peninsulas there. And I know that uh, I live right across the street and I share a lot of information with some of the senior citizens over there. Um, so in order to keep this a little more continuous, if you move that one notch over, uh, I don't think the population change as much, but you've got more of second street is contiguous, W street's a little more contiguous. Can I ask yeah. uh, which neighborhood are you you focusing on here? Bloomingdale. Okay, sorry. Too much much share the, here, let me share the map so yeah. folks can see. Um, is there one map you're... Oh, that's not it. Map two, yeah. Okay, map two. Okay, can you see that now in uh, 5X01, so. long yellow? 5X01, oh yes. Uh, map two. Two, yeah. Okay, so at the bottom, there's a little notch there. And yeah, exactly. Could that be moved over to the west? I think it's a pretty similar population. That way you don't have these two little peninsulas, the one that's in 5X01 and the one that's 5X02. You've got a little more continuity there on, I guess that would be V Street. 
and you'd have uh, on the left there, you Second Street a little be a little more cohesive there. Yeah, this is this block has three hundred twenty eight people, and this one has one hundred ninety eight. So with this What's our already over 20 it's 2108 so this is already over the the advised limit if we swapped them it'd be like uh 150 over no i'm i'm sorry i was the the little oh the one there. on the left yes yes the one on the left you just reverse those so that and that has 270 people in it i think that's the gauge he's in building if i'm not mistaken but uh that's so not Gage we, School. If that's W Gage School starts at V Street. Oh yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, I can tell D. you it's this has 116. Okay. This has 198. So I think the thing there was that pushed this 5X01 further out of balance. I mean, I certainly see what you're saying. It would make um well that actually you, seems to make it more if you said that the left section there has less, fewer people. There's 116, the one on the right has 198. Okay, so then that would actually balance things balance out. It out. Okay. It would How balance things out better. You would increase the popula uh, the population for XO1 and lower the XO2 a bit so that they're more in line with each other. There you go. All right, noted, thank you. Yeah, that, that definitely aligns better with the, the numbers. And it, it just seems more reasonable like that, that little notch there just doesn't make any sense and i appreciate that sure jeremiah did you have some did you want to speak i think you may have for a second I put my comment in the chat. I just, at this point, it is five, it is 7.40 or it's almost 7.45. And I would like to know where we're going from here. You're speaking of what's our next steps? Yes, ma'am. Well, I would think our next steps would be to go back and take all the comments into consideration as Rafi had said in the beginning and uh, figure out what map we, maps we could eliminate and which one we could work with to make whatever adjustments that can be made based on the comments we received tonight. Um, is that what you would, I mean, the rest of the co-chairs? is? That yeah, I think so. I think at this point, there's, there's. I don't know if we're going to be able yeah. to make a decision in this forum right here. No, we wouldn't be able to. But we can certainly um, regroup and revisit this as a, with the group. Um, the deadline, obviously, just in case folks don't know, to submit to the council is uh, April 1st. So we will definitely be hitting that mark one way or the other. Uh, Commissioner Barnes, did you have something to share? Is, is that a... Yes. What did you? What was the total of that little block that Joe wanted to move within um, 5X01? The one on the left was 116, and the block on the right was 198. 116. So that would make that, if you do the one on the left, that would make that total 2174. Or which one are you moving? I'm not screen anymore, but I, we can follow up and see. Um, because it's, it would add more to that. To that, yeah. I don't know if that, and that's just an issue with, I think that's only an issue with map two. So I don't know if that, um, you know, if, if map two gets, could use then we'll definitely take a look at that but i don't know if that's where um where the momentum is right now as far as that goes okay then adrian did you to be in map three 
Is it also map three? That's, mm -hmm. No, the momentum for like that's what people seem to be more interested in. We'll see. That's what people seem to be what? More interested in based on the comments that we've received online. Um, I did a tally and then just looking through the comments today. Um, in fact, someone just put in that they're for map three. It seems to be um, a map that a lot of people are supporting. Um, yeah. One thing we haven't discussed that was different in a couple of those maps um, that is relevant to the person who just made that comment in the chat is that some of the maps flip um, extend 5B a lot further in that column between South Dakota and Eastern into 5C, essentially flipping what's an SMD in 5C now over into 5B. It sounded like that from the comments. It sounded like that was not, people were not in favor of that. Um, so I think just to acknowledge that, and I think I think Commissioner Brevard would agree with that, that um, we should generally keep that 5B, 5C line, which does already go through Woodridge, but not, I guess, the heart of Woodridge. Um, keep that where it is. Anyway, I'm sorry, Adrian, did you have something? Question um, yeah. from the, the next steps. When you guys take the feedback from all of the public input that you had on and, and from the online stuff and tonight, and you go to incorporate that, will that process be made public so that folks will be able to at least watch or monitor so they have more information when you relaunch it in this forum? I, it seems like a lot of people were like, this was the first time I've seen it, or why did you do that? If we would be able to watch or the larger public would be able to watch um, this compilation that may be helpful in getting something done sooner than um, <laughs> than with the short timeline we have. Sure, that seems reasonable. Um, I mean, I think we have to, I can't speak for everyone, uh, all of my co-chairs, but um, we can certainly take that under advisement. And I think you're right that um, certainly if we can point people to a video of the discussion, then we don't have to rehash it uh, in live, live time. Let me just say, I think we need to do something between now and before you get ready to go to Congress. I mean, Congress, before you get ready to go to City Council. I know 5B was shafted last time from what we worked a lot on Ward 5. And what we finally decided was we thought was going to be the redistricting for Ward 5. And I heard someone say about uh, 5C has uh, to the left of uh, Quincy Street is 5C and then hard 5B. And that got to be for some reason, I don't know. But I was ASC commissioner and chair there when it was all 5B, not any 5C. So I think we need to look at, and I don't hear, I don't have a problem with it be 5C or B. That's not my concern. But I think we need to share with the community how we make decisions based on what happened in the past. Because it goes back to, and no matter what we say, it's going to go to our city council, and the city council is going to go to the city council as a whole, and they're going to make decisions too. But I think we need to feel as good about our community as we can to go forward and leave it to other people who decide whatever they are. So we got to fight somebody. Let's fight the outsiders, not each other. Let's be, you know, working as one group and agree with what we're going to do. And we can stand up to anyone and say, this is what we agreed on for five, for ANC, I mean, for ANC five. Ward five. So, I mean, Ward five. So I just think that is something we need to be consistent with and agree upon before we finish anything to the public. I think that's, uh, I appreciate that, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if my other co-chairs have anything else they want to add before we wrap or next steps um, that they want to articulate. Um, 
No, I just want to add, I mean, we understand Adrian's point. I think that we as the co-chairs can discuss and see what makes sense as far as next steps and transparency. We definitely want to be transparent, but I don't know that um, we have like the bandwidth or the capacity to make that these next meetings that we have as like live or what. So I think we'll have to discuss and figure out what, what makes sense. Okay, so we'll be in touch with the committee and in the next, I guess, day or two. And uh, from there, communicate with the broader community. Let me ask a question. Kimmy Von Matt, where do you live in, in Ward 5? I'm on Adam Street in Bloomingdale um, between 1st and 2nd. Okay, thank you. No problem. Great meeting, great comments, okay. great comments. Yes, thank you all for participating and for your time. Uh, this is still would qualify as a short ANC meeting, I think. So we're not quite living, uh, living the ANC life here yet, but longest meeting we've had. So thank you all for this and we will uh, be in touch. Thank you. Thank you all everybody for a, a kind and respectful uh, meeting. Yes. We, we were very well behaved here in Ward 5 this evening, and I appreciate everybody's uh, respectful contributions this evening. Yes, Have a I agree. Good night, and yeah. be safe. Yes. Thanks, Rafi. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Nola. Good night.